Hello everyone and welcome once again to my little channel here. Uh, excuse me while I just adjust this. There we go, right, okay. Um, sorry for my absence. Uh, a little holiday beckoned. So, uh, uh, hence a delay in uh, making some videos. Anyway, before I went on holiday, I decided to uh, have a look on a well-known auction site and I purchased this. Uh, some of you will, will recognise it as an Emax 200 Pro Nighthawk, which I should should say it came fully complete and ready to go. And unfortunately, because I operate a older style Tyrannis, which we now call non-EU, um, oh, I don't know if you can hear that. There's a Spitfire flying over again. I'm lucky again. <laughs> I'm very lucky. Um, he tends to fly over around about twice, three times a day. So uh, always a pleasure to see. Always a pleasure to see. Anyway, back to the subject in hand. I got this from uh, a well-known auction site. And it was all complete and all ready to go uh, when it arrives. As I was saying, I've got a very old style. Uh, must be about four or five years old now. Now, the original Tyrannis, not a Tyrannis Plus, just a Tyrannis. Uh, this was included with the the quad. Uh, unfortunately, this is, I think it's, uh, I think they class these as EU LBT, listen before talk, which is not compatible with the non-EU firmware, of course. Uh, I think I may have gone on, uh, I could have gone on to the FR Sky website and maybe put some non-EU firmware on there. I'm not entirely sure about that, but uh, never mind, it is what it is. So, um, for the benefit, I didn't really want to go through a total unscrewing of the, of the quad, but in order for me to get this to work on PPM, <coughs> I've had to dis disassemble it, and there were the bits in there, including the camera. Won't be wanting that, I won't want that for the time being, we can put those out of the way. And so what I've done uh, to get it to work on PPM, I've included my little jumper on the signal channels for 3 and 4 and obviously I've included the PPM uh, cable on channel 1. So upon looking inside and I'm going to try and point this out and I'll show you what I found. Have a look at this. This is this is terrible. This doesn't look original, does it? So um, I've decided, rather than argue with the seller, um, what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a video of it. I'm going to try and turn it round into a positive. It does work, so things are not that bad. But if you notice here completely non-standard soldering has gone on here uh, so I think possibly these ESC's may have been replaced at some point having said that um, it all figures out in beta flight it seems to be okay I just need to set it up so uh, you have to bear with me that Spitfire's coming over again making a bit more noise so uh, right to start off with, I've taken these bullet connectors off this ESC here. Um, this here was a little bit loose, so I've put a little bit of solder in there. What I might do, I might put some hot glue on there just to ensure the connectivity, make sure they don't wiggle around anywhere. But generally, I've, I've found that the uh, soldering, obviously, it's not factory. Um, what I do uh, I'm gonna sh I'm not gonna shrink wrap this so I've got some electrical tape I'm gonna take these take these down and keep these wires out of the way here um, what I do I'll continue with this and I'll come back when it's all done we'll go through the radio setup and we'll hook it up to beta flight 
and hopefully we'll get a, a, a decent flight out of it so uh, we will see you shortly it's it's probably a a cautionary tale for all you buyers of this sort of stuff from auction sites sometimes you just never know what you're gonna get do you but uh, there we go we live and learn don't we or well we're meant to so uh, we'll see you shortly and hopefully all this will be done and uh, after uh, a little bit of an impromptu soldering session um, what I've gone and done now is to take all these bullet connectors off um, there was one of them <laughs> and that dropped off the inside so it looks as though these are Chaos 25 amp speed controllers uh, I'll just show you that a bit more closer hopefully that's focusing there so what I've done I've directly uh, I've gone and soldered the wires directly onto the speed controllers uh, as, you, as you can see here and um, what I've done uh, there was a bit of foam on here on each of these I've mounted them onto the foam and I've taped them which means they will show on the upper sides of the thing but I'd rather they were taped down rather than have the possibility of moving about in the frame not that there would be much uh, possibility of it but just to be on the safe side so now it's just a question of fitting it all back together connecting up the camera and testing it and uh, see how we go so um, right be back very shortly with the um, with the uh, completed item we we'll give it a test okay right I thought I'd show you the uh, setup that I have now for the Emacs Nighthawk 200 Pro in beta flight. Um, it took quite a bit of working out. Um, what I do, I just recalibrate the accelerometer. It's now done, and I'll show you that it's all now functioning. As it should be. So, uh, right, if we go down to settings, I think uh, settings, configuration, beg your pardon. Um, oh, actually, I like to have the motor spinning. So, let's save that. Uh, so, I've got it on Quad X. Um, that's all been tested, that works fine. Now, what I found was that the out of the factory the board is inverted within the airframe itself and it's also turned 90 degrees uh, which threw me a little bit so these are the settings so on the roll degrees I've got hun minus 180 on the pitch degrees I've got minus 180 your degrees plus 90 gyro alignment is uh, clockwise 90 degrees flip Acceler accelerometer is clockwise 90 degrees flip and mag alignment magnetometer is also clockwise 90 degrees flip and I've got it set I've got a D4 R2 receiver which I've put into PPM RX input um, these are the settings that I have down here. I, I could probably use one or two of more, more of them, but um, I, I don't actually, I don't feel the need to at the moment. Um, so on my battery, yeah, I've got minimum cell voltage of 3.3, maximum 4.2. Uh, it, it's not HV, it's just an ordinary LiPo. Uh, with warning cell 3.5, uh, yeah, I, I could take that down. Eh? I could take that down a little bit I suppose but um, I'm happy with it as it is at the moment I'm just going to be testing it um, whether it actually works ah, that's what I want it to do I want it to if so um, a fail safe I'm going to have to set it to land so you can reboot that ok down to PIDs um, I don't really see any need to change that at the moment. I might come back to roll and pitch 
uh, I might increase that a little bit um, I don't have them TX with me so there's no point in testing that but that all works fine uh, modes uh, AUX1 I've got Armin AUX2 um, in the first instance I've got angle mode horizon and acro trainer so that's that's all done there uh, OSD I haven't done anything with that at the moment um, I might come back to that uh, the OSD or the uh, FPV screen at the moment seems to work very well so I'll come back and fiddle with that if I need to I've done a CLI dump uh, save those settings should I need to uh, uh, go back to those at any time so uh, let's take it up the field and we will give it a uh, little uh, line of sight uh, flight first see how she does then I'll take it out for a uh, just say hello flight. to everybody hello welcome everybody okay we uh, we're up the field again and I can't believe it what another lovely day okay so we're here now to um, have a look at the test flight of the Emacs 200 Pro Nighthawk uh, right we'll get the what we do we'll get it all turned on I hope the camera angle is okay and you can see it all. Um, what I'll do first, I'm going to take it for a line of sight view, a line of sight flight, and if I can, um, if I've got enough battery left, I've only got one battery for this unfortunately, but uh, if I have enough battery left, I'll take it out for a quick FPV flight. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to record it record the FPV camera anyway and it's come it's come straight up on the goggles that's good so we're press record and that's recording and we'll turn on the firefly And I believe to change it, we have to press that for a couple of seconds. That's on to a green. That's, a, that's now recording. I think, I, if my memory serves me right, I think it is green for 1080p and blue for 720 Okay, I've got it in high rates, and I think I've got it in angle mode. Quite twitchy on the uh, left yaw. I'm not, I'm not giving it much throttle. I'm not entirely sure what this thing's capable of. Although I've seen some good reviews on it, it seems to be quite ad agile. Seems to be going well. Let's give it a little punch out, shall we? And uh, see how she does. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not too bad. It's, it's not the best. But uh, it's good enough for me, certainly. 